Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the new series. My name is Pooja Devedi. Today we are going to discuss what is the reserve of lithium that has been discovered by the Geological Survey of India in the Raisi district of Jammu and Kashmir. Is it going to prove any significance when it comes to putting India on the lithium map? We are going to discuss all that. From the perspective of your examination, these are the things that are important. So first of all, let us see the news. The new find of lithium has been actually in the Raisi district of Jammu and Kashmir. And this has been categorized as inferred. We will discuss what inferred is. And inferred basically we can say it is uh, what the interpretation has been done on the basis of quantity, mineral content. And this is with respect to the growing level of confidence by the Geological Survey of India. Uh, we can say it is not very concrete. Okay. And the lithium find in Jammu and Kashmir is also comparatively uh, small when we, when we talk about considering the other parts of the world that have lithium reserves such as in Bolivia, 21 million tons, 17 million tons in Argentina, 6.3 million tons in Australia, 4.5 in China. And in Jammu and Kashmir, the inferred range is 5.9 million tons. Okay, so remember 5.9 million tons. Moving ahead now, we talk about the Geological Survey of India. It is actually an attached office of the Ministry of Mines. It was first established in the year 1851 in order to find coal deposits for the railways. Back then, railways were, was very important for the British because they wanted to reach the remote parts of India so that they can get some profit with respect to coal. This Geological Survey of India is a repository of geoscience information uh, since then and the status of geoscientific organization of international repute as well. Moving on, if we talk about its headquarters, it is in Kolkata. It also has six regional offices, Lucknow, Jaipur, Nagpur, Hyderabad, Shillong and Kolkata is of course having the headquarter as well as regional office as well. The Central Geological Programming Board is an important platform of the GSI uh, to facilitate discussion for synergy and to avoid duplication of work. Now, if we talk about inferred sources, what are inferred sources I already told you, it is actually something we can say that uh, the deposits have been found but it will not be very concrete when it comes to quantity grade and mineral content once that is ensured then it will move forward from the inferred range okay it is based on the information gathered from locations such as outcrops trenches pits workings and drill holes the united nation international framework classification for reserve resources Solid Fuels and Mineral Commodities of 1997, which is short formed as UNFC 1997, puts it into different categories. Okay, let's talk about UNFC 1997. It is actually a system for classification and reporting of reserves and resources of solid fuels as well as mineral commodities. How does it help? It helps in providing standardized, internationally recognized system for the reporting of resources and reserves. It was developed by the UN Economic Commission for Europe and it promotes transparency and consistency in the reporting of mineral as well as energy assets. And the basis for comparing reserves and resources data uh, is generally held because of the UNFC 1997. All right. Now the categories, uh, there are four major storage of exploration when we talk about UNFC triple, uh, 1997. First is reconnaissance. Then there is preliminary exploration and here only we have our inferred sources of lithium in the Raisi district of Jammu and Kashmir. Then we have general exploration and then we have detailed exploration. All right, moving on. Now, if we talk about lithium, it is the lightest known metal and the atomic number is three. Uh, the origin is pretty flashy because a Brazilian naturalist and statesman, Jose Bonifacio de Andralda e Silva, uh, when he was, he developed the mineral petalite on the Swedish, he found the mineral, not developed, but he found the mineral petalite uh, in the Swedish Isle Uto in the uh, 1790s. Uh, it was actually not very uh, sure, he was actually not very sure if it is uh, lithium or not. So this mineral is white to grey, but when thrown into fire, it flares bright crimson. It is also known as white gold lithium, okay because of its huge significant in, uh, significance in the current era. Now, in 1817, Swedish chemist Johann August Afudsen uh, discovered the petalite contained a previously unknown element only. So, this 
was basically very flashy and uh, sketchy beginning of the lithium. He wasn't able to isolate the mineral or metal entirely, but he did isolate one of its salt. And the name lithium comes from lithos, which is the Greek word, Greek word for uh, stone. Okay, moving on until only until 1855, it was not done that isolation would be possible. So one, when someone was able to isolate it in 18. 55 then since then only we could see that lithium as an independent element could be formed so british chemist augustus Matheson and german chemist robert bunsen ran a current through lithium chloride to separate the element all right moving on if we talk about the extraction it can be done either through solar evaporation of large brine pools very natural in nature or from hard rock extraction of the ore this is much more expensive the second one all right and we talk about the uses of it, immense uses. It is generally used in electrochemical cells which are further used in electric vehicles which India needs right now. Our laptops, mobiles, digital India for this also we need lithium. Thermonuclear reactions in that also it is used. It is also used to make alloys with aluminium and magnesium, improving their strength and making them lighter. Okay, so magnesium lithium alloy is done for armor plating. And aluminium lithium alloy is done for aircraft, bicycle frames and high speed trains as well like Vande Bharat. Now if we talk about the major global lithium reserve, 54% of the lithium is found in the this lithium triangle between Bolivia, Chile and Argentina. Okay, And Chile has the largest reserve than Australia and Argentina. These are the top countries with lithium reserve. Lithium triangle remember Chile, Argentina. And Bolivia, India is also with the help of ONGC Videsh exploring the regions of the triangle of uh, lithium. Now, lithium reserve, let's talk about in India. Preliminary survey have showed estimated lithium reserve of 14,100 tons. It is majorly found in southern Karnataka's Mandya district. Potential sites could be Mica Belt in Rajasthan, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Pigmatite Belts in Odisha, as well as Chhattisgarh and run of Kutch in Gujarat as well. Now, how India is getting its resources of lithium? First of all, we are heavily dependent on China. Specifically, if India is moving into the direction of uh, net zero, uh, you know, carbon emissions by the year 2070, we need electric vehicles for that. If we are moving into the direction of make in India as well as digital India, we need lithium for that. So, it, it is dependent on imports for lithium cells and batteries majorly on China. Over 165 crore lithium batteries uh, were imported between fiscal year 17 and fiscal year 20 and the import bill was upwards of 3.3 billion tons. So how wonderful, 3.3 uh, billion dollars, beg your pardon, how wonderful it would be that uh, we get our own reserve so that we can employ more people to manufacture it or become self-dependent or what? Atmanirgar Bharat. China, for Ch uh, from China we are dependent for both raw materials and cells. Also, India's late entrant into the lithium value chain, which is not very healthy. 2023 is considered a turning point for battery technology and we are hoping that by this new discovery, we could do something. Now, assistance in achieving targets is one of the significance by this lithium reserve. We have found this lithium reserve because India wants to be a country with net zero emissions by 2070. For this, we need clean energy and lithium is going to be a part of it. The Central Electricity Authority of India has estimated that the country will need 27 gigawatt of grid scale battery energy storage system by the year 2030, which will require massive amounts of lithium. So we need to ensure that more and more reserves are discovered and these become a more exploration friendly, also manufacture friendly. Moving ahead to the next point that is addressing global shortage. India has been a leader in the world when it comes to spearheading any sort of um, revolution. Even if we talk in terms of lithium, uh, even if we talk in terms of current situation in Turkey, or through Operation Dost only, we are helping our friend Turkey. Now, that is one thing that India is spearheading through soft power. Again, with the help of lithium reserves, India can put its uh, you know significance on the map of lithium by uh, addressing global shortage. If we have proper lithium reserve, we can ensure manufacturing it and rising demand for electric vehicles and rechargeable batteries is going to be increasing, uh, which is estimated to reach 2 billion by 2050. 
and as I already told you 54% of the lithium reserves are found in Argentina, Bolivia and Chile, this is the lithium triangle. Also there will be a lithium shortage by 2025 if India could work very well in finding its foot on ground when it comes to lithium reserve, we can spearhead a revolution in lithium uh, supply. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching and stay updated.